Right, here we go. <laughs> there we go. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is live on Facebook. It is oh my God. Kind of. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 22 of Bras, Bitches and Balls. It's Pi Day, um, it's Potato Chip Day, which is appropriate, given one of our guests. Um, and uh, uh, also R.I.P. Uh, Stephen Hawking. So, oh, yeah. you know, it's a weird day, math math mathematically and, you know, all that. So anyway, so... Uh, today's guest, we have uh, Karen Divis talking about potato chips. Um, Amy. Amy, um, who will be talking about... Uh, goats. City girl. Goats. Farms, so goats and soaps. Lisa is here and no doubt has questions. And here's Lee. Welcome back to Bras, Bitches and Balls. Okay, so it's been a very interesting couple of weeks. We got lots of fun things happening forward. Uh, Black Women Rock is happening this weekend. Did you know that? Uh, I think you mentioned it last time. Yeah. But I forgot that it's this weekend. And tonight is their art opening. So mm -hmm. we're going to go see Sabrina Nelson and Jessica Caramore and all of their lovely artists this evening. Um, and watch them do some lovely things. And also, sports-wise, Detroit is hosting the NCAA, and my Spartans are playing in Detroit on Friday. And on Thursday, they are having a practice session that is free and open to the public. Cool. What do you think? Nice. Down at Little nice, Caesars yeah. Arena. I cannot support Spartans, but I do support <laughs> their playing basketball in the city of Detroit. <laughs> I'm like, what do you say? Go what? Go Sparty? <laughs> go green. Go, go, go green. Lord. Okay, go green. Yeah. Just for today. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is almost um, St. Patrick's Day. We can say go green. Corktown then for that. Parade was last Sunday. I don't Sunday. understand that. Why was it last it, week? Because they always do it the Sunday before uh, yeah. St. Patrick's Day. Okay. So if St. Patrick's Day, unless St. Patrick's Day falls on the Sunday, it's always the Sunday before. Okay. Well, I mean, if that's just the tradition and two weekends. Two mm -hmm. weekends of fun. Yeah. More green beer. <laughs> I've never thought that could be healthy. <laughs> yeah, it's just food dye. It's the, the mm. beer part that might be the problem. Dye. <laughs> what? Not the dye. What's the problem? <laughs> What's the problem there? Mm. Okay, so um, there is a lack of mannequin in the studio today. Uh, we got some awesome news about uh, a competition that my son is in. He is a robotics builder at 10 years old and he is 17th in the world for his robotic skills and was invited to the world championships wow. last night and we got the invitation Holy last cow. night so when i was supposed to be getting prepared for the <laughs> podcast all of a sudden i was like oh my god celebrations yeah 17th in the world 17th in the world with his robotic skills He's 10 and he needs a resume. I know. I know. He can <laughs> he can program things and make them move and do tasks. And he built the robot from You never get to pick the channel stuff. at home. He can like create a robot to block <laughs> you or something. I love this kid. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's kind of out That's of left exciting. field. He ha he was 256th in the world last weekend. There was one more opportunity to show off his robot. He took a week and reprogrammed it, put it in the competition, exited 17th. So we were not expecting any of this. And this so, is on an individual level. Um, it's a team level. Okay. Uh, it, it is a team level. The, the unique part about Lively is his team dissolved <laughs> earlier in the season. Uh, people just lose interest. At 10, mm -hmm. you can't always keep people right. focused. Mm -hmm. So his team dissolved. He was a team of one. He had someone jump in for state competitions for the last three weeks of the season. We thought that was really going to be it. And then... Now we got to figure out substitute drivers from other kids from the robotics team. So it's kind of like Trent Reznor is Nine Inch Nails. I mean, you know, <laughs> right? It's, it's basically because he 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 did all of the pieces parts mm -hmm. for the project. Where usually you have like five or six kids doing all these things. He did every little bit. It, it, anyway, yeah, there you go. 
I, he's my he's the karate kid of his generation, in my opinion. So. Nice. <laughs> Only with robotics Only and not with, karate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This is his sport, damn it. When MIT comes you calling. You program it to sweep the leg. This is true. Really no. So anyway, that's, so why, that's why we don't have a mannequin today, because I was very distracted. Um, and, of course, now I'm like, I want to build my own robot, too. Can I play? <laughs> and he said yes. So, um, <laughs> which is good. I posted our Bra of the Week on our Facebook page. And the bra of the week is really a bralette because mm-hmm. it is going to be the season of the bralette. Bralettes are now starting to come out in larger cup sizes. Uh, the one that I posted actually goes up to a G, and I have ordered a different company who goes past a G with um, some of the different bands. So you'll see that also in the store. So if you have a bralette and you are a larger size, mm-hmm. does that mean that you're basically going to not be in the same place that you normally would, or do they have more support than a it's, smaller? It's not a wired bra. Right. It's a bralette. It, it, it's, you know, a sweatshirt is still a shirt. It's not a dress shirt. Right. Right. But this particular bralette that I put up actually provides a lot of support. Okay. And it looks like a top. Okay. So some of the people who've put it on, they could actually, in the summertime, wear this as a top. And with a skirt or whatever, if you like, don't mind your midriff showing or if you want to put something cute on it. it they're, they're, it's lacy, but it's double layered. And it's it's very solid. So this isn't um, something light and cute that you're going to put on your boobs. are going to sag down to your waist, okay. which is which is nice, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to be 16 with f- just firm flesh. You can, okay. you, we can wear them if we want to. Uh, those of us over 16. <clears throat> Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about Speak bras. for yourself. I'm perky. I was it. just going to say, <laughs> my flesh is really quite great. So. I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> <laughs> Lee is quiet. Um, so there you go. Bra of the Week is a bralette by Parfait. I brought it in in black. We were really, really happy with it. That's in the store right now. But I have, because we've been really successful with it in the first few days, it's coming in an ice blue. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, gosh. Ooh. Sounds pretty. Yeah. And then I doubled ordered it. Uh, it. It will be featured in Chicago when we open the Chicago store in April. Yay. Yay. Two things going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bra's coming to the masses. <laughs> so, okay. Other things going on. I know you have seen. I have not seen it, and don't spoil it for me, because I'm going next week for my birthday with my oh, sister. Yeah. And Nick, I don't know if you've seen it, but Black Panther oh. thoughts, oh, responses. Oh yeah, I've seen it. It's amazing. Fabulous. A few times. A few times. So <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. It looks amazing. And I saw an article you were talking about how the fashion industry was going to change based on mm-hmm. on the. Th- and I did. I've seen a few articles about that now about bold colors and patterns becoming great the necklines. Thing because of Great necklines. Because of Black Panther, how it's going to change the fashion industry. Mm-hmm. People are going to be focusing on the decollete and their throats and and dynamic hairstyles and yep. bold, bold color. Yeah. I, I tell you, that movie was a lot of fun to watch. And I can't wait to see what else is happening. The previews for some of the – we saw the previews for Venom. Of course, my husband looks at me. And oh I'm my like, God! I love what is that? I'm like, Venom. that's Venom, dude. That, that was great too. That yeah. Was, oh, that, fun. That is Venom. He, it, yeah. It was. And a, then it was a lot of fun. Tomorrow yeah. night, I'm going to see the other. Um, I believe it's Black Producer. A Wrinkle in Time. Ah, oh, which is one of my director. favorite books growing up. Right, sir. Yeah. Is it director? Like, Black yeah. director. Yeah. So yeah. April Duvernay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, She's Ava Duvernay, and of course Oprah, but. Um, it's been interesting to see that those two are like the, you know, on the top of the list right now, uh-huh. given the Oscar so white <laughs> a couple years ago. Things, um, things are changing and, and that's a, it's a great thing. Yeah. Yep. And oh. my, so yeah, that was one of my favorite books growing up. So a girlfriend and I are going to go see that tomorrow night. Well, Lively hasn't read too. it yet. I didn't realize that there was a series, though. I only remember oh, reading yeah. the first book. So yeah, now I have to go read the whole well, series. Well, that's, that's true for a lot like uh, The Giver. Too. The Giver. The, the, the Giver had a follow up? There's a series of books from The Giver. Really? Yeah, that, 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 that you, you can just stop at The Giver, though. Yeah. I, I would really. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I don't, I mean, really The Giver was good, but I don't think it was. It, it ends, it ends perfectly. Yeah. You don't like, need... kind of like, why do you have any follow up to that? That's and yet kind there of where are, it needs to are stop. There are four more books. Really? 
Well, it's I'm excited about that. Yeah. And then Ready Player One. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Oh. Lively's reading that one. And the he language won't put it for down. a kid is a little bit harsh, but my son has read it multiple times now. How and, old and is now your son? He's 12. Okay. And he has been introduced now to all these 80s concept. I've caught him uh-huh. singing Dead or Alive, <laughs> spinning around the house. Like, now this is his thing, and he is ready to go see that movie. And so it's going to be huge. I have a feeling Steven Spielberg, from the early reports on it, knocked it out of the park. Good. So I think so many kids mm-hmm. are going to be reading that now. Uh-huh. It's pretty high-level stuff for a kid, too. I'm, I'm right. excited about it, and but he wants to finish the book before he goes I to see the movie. I know nothing about Ready Player yeah, One. Yeah, I've never heard of it. It's um. Oh, it's a virtual it's reality a big nostalgia thing mm-hmm. for like uh, boys. Oh, is this a like a Stranger Things stuff. but movie kind no, of? No, like I mean no, not not in a horror like, but like a throwback. It's more like living in 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 a, in a computer generated world. Um, so and like Tron. Yeah, minus the whole kidnapped by a computer <laughs> thing. And um, they have to go solve a mystery. The, a very wealthy person hid something in this yeah. program. Like an Easter egg of sorts. Oh, yeah. And so they're all trying to find this. And it should I be. Actually, so it's I like actually geocaching post- in a computer. Yes. Kind of. There you go. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, but it's life or death. Yeah, you know, I like posted something today actually, which is called Ready Player One Girl Edition, which is. Um, Quite funny if you've read Ready Player One. So this what when is when was the did the book come out? Um, it must be somewhat recent. It's yeah, fairly it's recent, recent. Like yeah. five years for sure. Five years. And then the movie Six will be years. out in the next month. Yeah. 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 Um yeah. so we've got do you have questions today, Lisa? Are oh, oh questions of course I do. Have? I have lots of questions. Always. Do you have questions about goats or books? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, so we were talking about books and books coming out, and Karen is back. Yay! Because not only is it National Potato Chip Day, and she wrote a book about potato chips, but also she has a new book coming out, and I want to know about the secrets of Detroit. I am. I'm in launch phase, which is a very daunting phase where you're trying to think, how can I get the word out about this book and not kind of overwhelm people with hey, Karen wrote something else. So uh-huh. uh, that is the part of the joy of Secret Detroit is it's all new to a lot of people, which surprised me. I really thought everybody was aware of all this fun stuff all around the city. And I'm finding people even who work in Detroit for 20 plus years are like, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I actually stumped a friend of mine who's a local historian as well. She didn't know that like Wayne State has a mortuary science museum. And you can go see all I this stuff. I knew that they had a department, but I didn't yeah. know they had a museum. Inside the department. Oh, field trip. Oh, it is oh, yeah. fabulous. It's a little room. You guys, last you know, it's week, not too big. we had a punk rocker on, and his partner, his life partner, does crime scene investigation. Oh, like real ones. Oh, no, real no, ones. I want to hear the that one. the police department. <laughs> That's right up my alley now. Yeah, we're like, true crime, and he's like, oh, you got to know about my life partner. She does this, and then he told us some of the scenes that she had stumbled oh, upon, no, no. and oh, it Terry, was terrifying and video. fascinating. Terrifying and fascinating all yes. at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, there's a so, local guy who's a lie detector specialist who that. speaks too, and he, he says some of the things he's seen and heard he could not repeat. And I'm like, no, really. <laughs> Come Tell on. me about it. Tell share it. it. Share it. <laughs> so I saw a picture of a car yes. sculpture. That's one of my favorites. Is a friend of mine, a photographer named Sal Rodriguez. When he found out I was doing the project, he's like, come on, I'll take you out there. I'm going to show you these places that I know about that you don't because he's like a graffiti specialist. Mm-hmm. And he follows all the artists around and he does documentaries on them putting up these massive ones. Like everything from Shepherd Ferry to um, Hence, all the places around Detroit. So he took me out one day and I bought him lunch as a thank you. But the car is like... a uh, driven across the United States by this artist and he got to Detroit. It was the great American road trip. He's a British fellow. And okay. when he finished, he put it on a loading dock of an old sugar factory right outside Eastern Market. I've seen it. It is like a mm. stone's Wait, throw. Really? Yeah. That's what got me. Is like, I've I never have driven seen it. past it's and through. Yeah. Exactly. It's on its Huh. I'm it's planning on, on going headlight. down to Eastern Market Saturday. I'm going to have yeah. to go look So it's on a little it. side street. I want to say Oliver, but I'd have to double check my notes. That's really, there's the can artworks that's like a block off of Gratiot, and then right beyond the can artworks, which is worth seeing too, because he's got all the kind of like little art park next to his place. You see this giant car just upside down, perfectly vertical. It looks like, you know, Selma and Louise. Yes. 
Yeah, Looks like stopped. it landed that way. Oh. And I guess he got a bunch of bikers to help him weld it there. So he's even got a great backstory nice. of how it came to be. Yeah, it's amazing to see. And you're like, I've lived here or in this area my whole life. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know any of this stuff existed. Huh. Uh, and then there's right in the field across there is this gorgeous like two-story container house that's a now an Airbnb that's been painted by one of the local graffiti artists, and it is spectacular. Mm. And so we just kind of went around all summer long last summer and saw all these places and drove all over Detroit and saw everything you could see because I had to see it in person. I couldn't just phone it in and right. look, look it up on the Internet and right. look at pictures. You know, Google Earth will let you get away with that. No, this was in real color, talking to people, walking around, um, boiling heat, freezing cold, didn't matter. And it was amazing both the historical monuments but then all the oddities you know the the weird stuff like the giant bowling pin in the mi pueblo parking lot you know you can mm-hmm. take Again, a little selfie don't know about this either it's just like That's crazy great. spots crazy spots so what is your favorite secret of detroit i like the historical ones because i admit i have like no background in history american history any kind of history so this is to me has been a huge education as i go so the one that i fell in love with was kind of figuring out the places i'd either read about in a book like austin sweet's house from mm-hmm. arca justice right I still have or to read that. there was a famous supreme court case involving two different couples that basically abolished redlining so you couldn't say, you know, African-Americans can live here, Caucasians can live here. And we're going to block you by, you know, federal law. Mm-hmm. That case was overturned by a family here in Detroit in part. And you can go see their house. That was the big dividing line. Like they were encouraged to more or less be sued by their neighbors to have to leave. And that case got to the Supreme Court. And the McGee house stands right there in the city near Tyreman. Um, you can go buy that house, too. And to me, like the, the wall as well, the, the famous mm-hmm. eight-mile wall, um, that still stands. That yeah. blows my mind. The neighbors, I guess, actually like it because it's a decent fence line. And so they've painted it so it looks less garish and symbolic of basically evil. And it's it been adopted <laughs> into the community. Huh. But it's up against a, a city park. So there's all these kids playing and running and around no on the other side. And on the other side of this this uh-huh. thing that was built to create racial inequality. And you're just like, mind blown. I, I had no idea. Or when Gordon Park got rededicated, that's the site more or less of like where the 12th and uh, the, the, the 1967 mm-hmm. riot slash mm-hmm. uprising oh, yes. slash rebellion, yeah, how they redid Gordon really? Park. Yeah. And the day we happened to go there, my daughter and I were going to go take a picture of the, the new sign they had put up. They were having a massive park rededication. So there were bands and people oh, and wow. met some great folks and just walked around and couldn't have been more delighted with seeing a, a place that had been allowed or not allowed was like sent into ruin be brought back to this glorious public park with a stage and mm-hmm. all this room for opportunity. And uh, it's, again, a city that is so alive, so many, you know, 300 plus years of history all tried to compile into a little tiny book, as it were. So I joke, you can throw this thing in your car, and just as you're driving around the city, check mark everything that you have seen or not seen. Oh, that's great! So it yeah. could be a glove box gift yeah. for Christmas. Yeah. I right. love this. This is uh, and it's nice that it has oddities, but also some historical stuff. This is one of the things that when I talk about geocaching, I like doing because yes. they'll often have geocaches hidden places like the um, you know, the old underground railroad stop mm-hmm. and. Um, in Greek town or places like that that are historically significant, so it'll force you to go there to go find the cash, but just also walk, you walk, learn walk, about right. yeah, walk by something it. that like I was in um, Tempe, Arizona. Uh, went to, to Phoenix for a conference, and so I did some geocaching around Tempe, and there was an old restaurant that has like was one of the first places that was when Tempe was founded, you know, so it was like, there's the geocache and you have to read some information and provide the data so they know that you were there. But it's, it's neat because you get like the history and not all of them are like that. Most of them are just, you know, you, you find something hidden. But it's going to find it, but it's really cool. Highway and walk instead of, you know, yeah. And it's taking the safe way. And the historical stuff is really interesting because like you hear about all of this stuff, but you have no, concept one especially of the civil rights how recent it was and two how much of it like you don't get the personal yes you know like you can uh, like i said i still have to read arc of justice it's been on my list to read forever but um 
but you can read that, but you still don't get the mm-hmm. the personal connection to it until you go, wow, that was that was Ossian Sweet's house right there. That right. was one that I went to by myself without the kids that day and drove up to it. And I'd read Ark of Justice enough that I was like, okay, I kind of feel like I've got a basis in this this story of this man, this doctor who wanted to do better by his family. And this house meant the American dream to him. And he was going to defend it to the death, basically. But this white mob surrounds it on their their first night there. And just it sounds very dramatic and very movie-esque. And you can kind of picture it in your head. But then you pull up to this house. And it is the American dream. It is this little beautiful bungalow and it's painted blue and it's at the end of the street and all these neighbors are out doing their lawns and they're fixing up their sidewalks and so it has this like immensely home-like meaning to you all of a sudden like I would have defended this house too like you're now there and I remember just being in tears and some guys were out fixing the sidewalk in front of Mm -hmm. another house and they're like why is whitey girl standing on the street (laughs) crying (laughs) And I'm like, you, to have it mean something beyond, mm-hmm. again, the words on the page or an internet site, um, and to have that depth of experience in your own city, so to speak. Because, again, I've covered Detroit as a reporter for 20-plus years. I hadn't seen all these places until I kind of forced my own hand. I, my list was like 120, and I had to narrow it down to 90. And so that was tough, too, because it's like, oh, there's so many great places. Right. <laughs> How do you decide which one's this is an not going to make it? Yeah, right. I put some real obvious ones that, like, everybody knows, and then some that were like, oh, this is new or different, or someone just put it up last year, like the, the TARDIS, the Detroit TARDIS yes. that's up now. There's that a TARDIS? Is, th- yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a, little, a library. little library. Yeah, he made oh. it so that when you even open the doors of it, it makes the noise that the TARDIS <laughs> makes, you know, now, because he's funny. really taking it to the next level. The so friend of a huts. friend. If you want to, if you want me to reach out, we could probably get them on here. So, do you but have yeah, any animal-related stories? Hmm. Now that I got to think about, were there any animals? So I got to tell you, when you, whenever anyone mentions Easter Market, the first thing I think about is when I lived over in East English Village and was watching the news one morning, and there was a little bull that had escaped. <sighs> yeah, and he was no. running oh. around on grass. <laughs> there was a giant cow head. Hmm. <laughs> On Mac Avenue. For that, was, old ice cream in, that was in um, 8 Mile. Yeah, that was the yeah. 8 Mile yeah. cow that they fixed up for that. And it used to be on a dairy uh, farm or like a, a milk store mm-hmm. in Detroit. Yeah. And they had two of them, one on the east side, one on the west side. Uh-huh. That thing was hilarious, too, because, again, I'd always heard about it from friends. All these things that are like, oh, yeah, go buy this, go buy that. So um, your book should be in every Airbnb in the city so that when yes, people yes, come yes, in. Sure. Wait, you can't have Pretty Airbnbs much. in the city. Well, I'm, I'm curious about that because I keep seeing uh, Airbnbs Airbnb on the being, down low. Right. being advertised. And I thought, wait, I thought these were Well, they dialed yeah. back on it, didn't yeah. they? I don't know. But the, the, the interesting thing pedal. is mm-hmm. if you, yeah, um, really I, I just watched a. Uh, I think I mentioned to you, Adam ruins everything, which is a right. uh, Adam Conover yeah. does this thing, and he did it on, um, I don't know if it was on affordable housing or what, but basically it was that there are people who will go rent units for themselves, but then not live there and completely just Airbnb it. Yeah, and so then it increases the costs of, you know, rental housing because they can make more mm-hmm. Airbnb than just renting a year-long lease and living there yeah. so one of the issues has be- become that that airbnb in many cities is pushing housing prices up and and taking or taking over affordable housing yes. that somebody could be in exactly and it you know we're we are a capitalist society so there is part of okay i understand capitalism you you found a place to make some money there you go that maybe that supplement your income but as a as a society, what are we doing to our housing? Right. And what are we doing to the tax dollars that we've put in to subsidize hotels and different um, things right. that we've had being built in the city? New Orleans is going through the same kind of thing. I had I had shared that out there too with um, the question of Airbnb that it's taking um, the the monies that have been put into the tourist centers for the hotels. Uh, now people are living more in in um, the neighborhoods when they're visiting. New Orleans, and it's taking away what the, the hotel, tourist dollars right. were going to be, and the taxes and the fees, and which all that you know we tax those, and then sometimes that tax revenue is used for things like stadia and schools and different things. So there, there is some some question as what are we doing with the Airbnb? Is that going to stay? Is it going to go? It's just like with 
with Uber and Lyft and taxi medallions, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So anyway, um, so Karen, thank you. Thank you. I'm really excited about your book. When is it coming out? Where it can we buy it? It is out April 15th, so a couple more weeks. I hope to have a little copy in my hot hand soon enough, and it'll be all where books are sold, so local booksellers. Pages and I are working on a date. I'll be there for one of the book events. Mm -hmm. Anything um, in Midtown? I hope. Okay, hey, I'm we talking get a to couple source. of copies I done in the Chicago yes. store. Yeah. yeah, I could take I could take him to the I'll Chicago take you up store. On that. All right. Yeah. Cool. See, I think your book should be given to summer camps and make it like a day trip for kids so That's they can learn. That's really what I'd love to emphasize to people is that my kids went everywhere in Detroit with mm -hmm. me. And they have since they were babies because when I was blogging for Time Magazine for their assignment Detroit project, mm -hmm. the kids went everywhere with me then too. And they know this place, like they know where Milwaukee Junction is and they've been to the Packard and did the mm -hmm. tours and you know different places that if you demystify both the city and its history and they can understand it and tell it. And then um, the next book event I actually do is at their school. So their librarians like come in and talk about Detroit to these kids. Mm -hmm. And now they'll be like, oh, mom, take me here, take me there. They were not uh, strangers to any city now. They can feel comfortable in any place. And that's my goal as a parent is just make them feel like they're citizens of the world and no place is off limits. Mm -hmm. That's great. And one more thing I want to say before we move over to Amy and Goats Garrett. is uh, uh, Karen has been getting great accolades for the prior book that she wrote that she was on last fall for writing The Witch of Del Rey. Witch of Del Rey has been a great surprise in a way because I have been able to effectively use its gospel to both dispel any myths about Rose Vera as the subject of the book, but also use it to inform with Del Rey a little bit because it's gotten more attention as that Gordie Howe Bridge is going forward and they're tearing down all these different, what I call cultural landmarks out mm -hmm. there. And thankfully, a lot of uh, publications from the Free Press to Bridge Magazine are all covering now what's going to happen to the residents and what has already occurred there that led it to be where they have to be bought out and moved elsewhere within the city. And it's a good thing for their health because there is a lot of concern mm -hmm. about the environmental mm -hmm. uh, risks of living in that area. But it also will revisit how do we treat both people as far as their long-term residencies in areas where we want to develop and this idea of gentrification and all these things that Detroit really needs to have these conversations about now as development is starting to ramp up. And I hope the residents of Delray get a fair shake. It seems like they're going to, but it continues spotlight on these kind of topics. And if the book can do that, great. We should send the book to uh, My Favorite Murder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a podcast that, that Lisa and I both listen to. Um, and uh, I think Karen and Georgia might enjoy it. I did. Send them a little care package of, yeah. of that, that and some of Melanie's artwork. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I love your books. Thank I, you. I love the fact I'm that you come fun. on here. So thank you very Not much. Not at all. And thank you. Potato chip day. Yes. Go eat some <laughs> So And Nick some brought, uh, it, it is pie day, of course, 314. <laughs> Yep. Uh, and yesterday was 313 day, but we don't have better made chips here, unfortunately, Karen. But we do have potato chips for National Potato Chip Day and pies, little mini pies little for mini pie pies. day. So thank you, Nick. Well, Lay's was a, a, a partner to a Detroit chip company called New Era. So Lay's and Pringles is also out of Battle Creek. It's a Kellogg's really? product. I had no oh, idea. Yeah. 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 They bought yeah. it about two or three All years ago. Like, what? <laughs> so if you eat those chips, you are legit to, on uh, National Potato Chip Day. I will I'll give so you Lay's, dispensation. you get a pass. Yep. <laughs> I was going to run by the store and grab some butter made on the way here, but I didn't, which is good because 696 was closed down to one lane yes. for pothole filling. Nightmare. Mm -hmm. Happy well, March, everyone. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I worked with uh, a family member from the Better Made uh, company one time, and she came in and brought me chocolate covered yes. potato chips, Yum. a ten of them, and I was like, "You are just evil, evil. <laughs> that is, that is so unfair." That used to be just chocolate. a Christmas uh -huh. thing, and now it's year round. Oh my god, it was my so first good. job was <laughs> dipping things in chocolate. <laughs> Really? Yeah, You've had a charmed life. Yeah. Did you we get used to dip cookies, pretzels, potato chips? Oh, and what a delightful them. job! Was it <laughs> chocolate? No, Noah's oh. down under. Okay. Okay. So did you get tired of chocolate-covered things? Did. Oh, yeah, that's the I problem did. with they lovely things like that. Is then the you're like, 
Oh, this is gross. Like, well, after see, a while, yeah, you're just like, that doesn't happen. Like I've worked now. in a pizza yeah. place. Yeah. I loved pizza. I worked in a donut place, filling donuts at, you know, three o'clock in the morning. Still had no problem with donuts. Just loved them. Well, I don't have a problem with going out to eat in a bistro, but I've never been able to. Back when I was in college, I used to be a chef. And it's not a question of the hygiene of the place. It's just I've never been able to eat at any place that I've actually worked as a chef. Like, I can't bring myself after I leave right, to, like, to go back to go back and eat there because it's like. That was my prison. I need yeah. to go. Kind of. So Crazy. You know. Well, I think in restaurants you can be very forgiving because you've been there doing it, but then you also know all the secrets of what's right. going on in the background, right. and that's a horrible knowledge to have sometimes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so so we've done some wonderful uh, topics. Now let's do goats, which is also awesome. Goats. Did you know that? I, I, do I remember something about yoga, goat day? Goat I want, that's what I want to know. Day. Do you proof of goat yoga, or is that just crazy talk? Well, we do do goat <laughs> yoga. It's just an opportunity for people to hang out with goats for an hour. And you I, had a goat birthday party last year, which oh. I missed. We do. Every year we have a baby shower. <gasps> Did you have it already I this know, year? No, like this year it's That's the it. Save the day after Earth Day. So it's the 22nd, I think. Of April. Yes. April 22nd. Mark your calendars. Going. Yeah, going. We register at Target baby for shower. human babies. <gasps> and then to come to our party, you just have to bring a new baby gift. And, and do you it, get to hold baby goats? <laughs> Well, so we have lambs this year. <gasps> we have Steve, Eddie, and Emma. And um, I, I, I don't have any baby goats. I may have to buy a goat, but we <laughs> I have a we goat didn't puppy. have any babies this year. So I mean, I don't have a goat puppy personally. A so, goat puppy? Yeah, a baby goat. So oh. we have, she so a goat puppy. I got a goat puppy. Everything for Lisa is a puppy. She has four at her home. So they're all. Okay, got yeah, it. And they're, none of them are actual puppies, but one of them is called Peagle, the puppy beagle. That's not his name. That's just his nickname. He comes when he wants to come to it. He comes to that and Rue and Ruger. But he's a beagle, so sometimes he just chooses not to listen, regardless of what you call mm-hmm. him, even if you call him asshole. Um, <laughs> it works. He's a dick. Okay. Um, <laughs> he is. <laughs> we're having we're fighting this morning. The older beagle is uh, much she has more. Chillax. Two beagles and two Rottweilers. The Rottweilers are amazing, lovely, sweet, sweet, sweet. Well, the female is. I was about to say really sweet, sweet. Uh, <laughs> she only sounds like she's going to eat Ely. <laughs> she loves human she, females. <laughs> she really does. Okay, d- digress, digression here, but Minnie, Minnie, so every once in a while I'll go and, and help with Minnie, but she, when you go in, automatically she's like, someone's in my house, it's not my mom. And she does sound like a Godzilla. Mm-hmm. She's she going like to kill me. She will eat your face. And, she and also sounds like that when she has her Rottweiler rumble, which is like they kind of purr. Her, 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 like they'll be her, on their back her. and you'll be petting them and they'll be like, and, and it's, it's very, and you're like, you know, I know you're enjoying this, impressive. but you sound like you're going to eat my face. It's oh, very yeah. impressive. So I come in with lots and lots of treats um, and uh, just wait. And you I, you have to let her do it for like 10 minutes. It's a long time. <laughs> just like, and I just start throwing treats. I'm like, Minnie, it's me. Minnie, it's me. Oh, Jesus Christ. Minnie, it's me. <laughs> and then and then at some point she's like, oh, oh it's you in here. And oh, hey, I you want to cuddle? She's, hey, she loves me. But yeah, cuddle? She for loves a while, women. For a while, she looks like a demon. She does not like female <laughs> dogs, so we have three boys and her. Um, she's 10, so she's not going to live a whole lot longer. And then we have Ondex, who is two and a half, and he is... He's really tall and skinny. He's like a runway model. About this tall. Yeah, he, I call him my runway model. Weird. He's a very <laughs> skinny Rottweiler. He may be part Doberman. I'm not sure. He looks like he's part Doberman. All of his siblings are very you know, typical Rottweiler, shorter, stocky. But you can have... Girls can girl dogs can have multiple male they can. daddies in one. They can. Literally. Um, but he, uh, I mean, I don't know. I keep being told he's going to fill out, but I don't know. But he is like a little sugar bear. He is the sweetest little guy ever. But he's in that bone. I am also an investor in a doggy daycare uh, that a friend of mine from elementary school and high school back home, I'm from northern Michigan, um, started. And on top of having the doggy daycare, she has an She animal used to live on a farm so we created a nonprofit farm sanctuary oh where so we uh it's in um the westlake area of austin mm. and it's on the on the property of the doggy daycare so there are a couple of pigs that were rescued from the houston floods mm-hmm. some um, miniature ponies i think now um some chickens and we got we had a goat named stevie stevie the goat was is a little special he's not as like 
interactive as most goats. He's kind of afraid of everything. So she got a nanny goat thinking that they would kind of bond. Mm -hmm. And the nanny goat was super mean to him. And then the day I flew in back in November, the day before she was like, I was looking at the nanny going, she's really fat. Oh. And she called and she's like, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, she just eats a lot. And then she's like, was Stevie yeah. not castrated? Then no, no. This was it was already pregnant when she got it, ah. uh, and she walked out into the the barn, and we have some feral cats that come in, and she feeds them, and she thought one of the cats had gotten into the pen. No, the nanny's a little white goat. This was a pitch black little baby goat. <laughs> so we have a goat puppy. His name is so the nanny goat is Sunshine. So his name is Orion. So did the goats need to be adopted? Do we need to go get the goats no, for Amy? No, they are part of the farm <laughs> sanctuary. What's more goats, Amy? No, I don't. So the idea is that we will um, have we have the farm sanctuary, and uh, she will bring in kids with autism, people with PTSD and mm-hmm. depression to come in and work with, you know, hang out with the dog with the dogs, not with the dogs, with the with farm the animals, um, and then that. That nonprofit will also, um, she in the past, she's done things like take um, medical supplies to Ila de Mujeres and to Peru, where they have a lot of street dogs, mm-hmm. um, and drop off supplies from the local veterinarians who've dropped things off. So right now she's actually in Puerto Rico with Steve O from Jackass, who also adopted a rescue dog from Peru, so she just reached out to him. And he is getting dogs spayed and neutered in Puerto Rico for poor families. And she, last I talked to her, was trying to commit to bring 100 dogs back from a sanctuary in Puerto Rico to various rescue groups. I've been watching her on on Facebook. She's been doing some great work. Yeah. Um, But But Amy has goats (laughs) that do work. That do work. They do. So when I first met Amy, um, all I knew is that you made soap Mm -hmm. from goat's milk. And I met you over at the Recycle Here facility mm-hmm. over at um, Trumbull and Holden mm-hmm. with Matt and Amy's group. Yep. And uh, fell in love with her and her spirit and her husband and um, your products. And we sold them, and we still have yeah. some detergents uh, at, at Busted. And if anybody needs them, and it, you, I mean, you can find your soap still in, in Whole Foods, right? Yeah, Westbourne Markets. In Which Westbourne. City Girls Farm. We have not said the name of her company. So City Girls Farm Soaps. Yeah. And um, where else could you buy them? Do you have an, a, an online We do. Source? So we have a website, um, citygirls.farm, and then you can get it. Our farm is located at Goldner Walsh in Pontiac. Um, and so they have our full line of products in their flower shop. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So uh, did you make the um, soaps out of the goat's milk? Yeah, we've been doing this since 2011, um, and we goat's milk from our goats. Um, I freeze it. I make everything at six weeks start to finish. And then um, we expand it into lotions and laundry detergent, like you said. And then we started making things that aren't necessarily made with goat's milk, but they're the same thought process that we go into with our company of it being good for your skin, good for your body. So now we make a bug balm that you can Ooh, put on wow. you. Um, works. It's unbelievable that, yeah, that we use on our vacation. But then what we did uh, three years ago, I think this year, when two of our goats had quadruplets and twins and four of them were males and there's typically no use for males in <laughs> agriculture because you can't you only milk need them? one. <laughs> Um, So we had always had in the back of our heads that we would do conservation grazing, using the goats to tackle invasive species instead of using poison, instead of broadcast spraying of Roundup and Rodeo. So we kind of worked Mm -hmm. on our business plan, expanding it with the male goats, and um, launched that officially last year. And starting May 4th, we've been hired by the Leelanau Conservancy. May Yay. the 4th be with you. Nice. Yeah. May the 4th be with May you. May the 4th be with you. <laughs> um, and we're going to put 37 goats in the Clay Cliffs Nature Preserve to tackle garlic mustard. Wow. wow. And Wow. Yeah. So what do you call that? Conservation grazing. But what do you call it? You have a special name for it. Oh, we used to call it goatscaping. Goatscaping. <laughs> but then people didn't, were like, what? So <laughs> we're like conservation grazing. Kind of, is kind of best. sums it up in two words more what we're well, doing. But they're like, are you manscaping your goats? Yeah. You're like, no, the goats are <laughs> landscaping. I'm picturing them like Edward Scissorhands, like standing <laughs> yeah. on two legs and like they're, they're <laughs> carefully pruning. Well, you know, goats eat anything. So I guess they'll eat anything that other animals That's want. 
amazing. Well, I mean, if deer ate garlic mustard, it wouldn't be an issue. Right. But they don't. So we that's why we brought in the three lambs. And so we're going to, um, we're taking seven of our livestock from Pontiac. And then we're going to, we actually had um, 30 goats donated to us by Idle Farms in Northport, Michigan. It's a huge dairy, award-winning yeah, dairy. I mean, there. I don't know about them, but I know where Northport is because yeah, a, so a lot of the cherry industry is up there. Yep, 30 goats yeah. to the project. And it's this huge team effort to make it happen. And we're going to be tackling over three weeks, like five acres of land. Oh, wow. So when you say donate, they're they're not They've given us the goats. You're going to own the goats? We're going to own the goats. So they run a closed herd. So once they leave the property, most most um, farms, livestock owners run closed herds. So once your your animal leaves, it doesn't come back. Okay. So where do you and then that's because store they do all dairy. of them? Well, then when we're done. I mean, done, do you have space in Pontiac or are you no, going to? So what we'll do is when we're done working, we're going to try to keep tagging on to get at least eight weeks of work up there. And then we can keep the best grazers. And then I'm going to keep a couple to um, breed, possibly. There's a gentleman who's helping us cart them around the Leelanau Peninsula. So he's going to get two of them. <laughs> okay. I just and have to say my I've visual been, of carting please, them around with a go in a video little cart. Tape. Yes, you must videotape some I'm of this sure. or Facebook Live them. I Facebook so, Live I'm sure, oh, I'm I'm sure what you mean in that. terms of carting them around in a is like in a trailer. livestock trailer. But in my head, it was like just a little a old wooden around. cart, yeah. like wheeling a goat around. <laughs> It was, um, it was a hilarious You know, and try to head. sell some to farms. <laughs> and then, I mean, I have to be, you know, Goats very, are tasty. They are. And and it's the... I love um, them, but they're also tasty. I mean, I wouldn't eat one that I had named, but... Well, no. But you know what? <laughs> I mean, Michigan in itself is the largest importer of goat's meat in the United States. It is? Mm-hmm. Wow. I, well, and I will tell you that... Um, oh, my God. I'm going to forget the name. El Barzon. They have a great goat um, dish. I feel very, very bad talking about eating the goat. So, you know what? You can't feel bad. Bacon bacon is its own, own, like, vegan killer. Bacon bacon keeps me from being vegetarian so so well. Yeah, but, but pigs are very very smart, and goats are not that smart, but they are cute. Goats are very smart. Are they actually? Are they? But you have to think of it this way too. Um, I had a goat that she had broken a leg, so she was getting around on three legs. Yeah. But the other goats were picking on her. It's a herd mentality. It's survival of the fittest, etc. It's the way nature works. So I made the decision to have her processed because the goats that broke my heart to put down, I bury. And I have like a little goat graveyard. And those are the ones that I say good morning to every day because they were super, you know. Now I'm going to cry. I am too. Don't cry. So I made the decision to have her processed because... I know people who are hungry, mm-hmm. and here's 50 pounds of meat that is good for you. And if you can't get to the grocery store, here's some meat for you. Mm-hmm. So I'm driving down Woodward with, you know, I do goats in a Jeep. I do it on Instagram and everything. And she's looking at me in the back of the window. And I'm like, well, maybe I shouldn't. You seem to be fine. Maybe, maybe I should just turn around and take you home. And then I thought, no, because then if she, you know, gets picked on and gets another leg broken, you can't have a two-legged goat. I mean, there's just, you know. And then I fed somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you kind of, and and I feel bad when people talk about, like when people ask if we're a sanctuary or a rescue, and it's like, no, I mean, this is a this is a business plan. It's it's a we're trying to do things um, to heal the earth, but realistically it costs so much money to feed them over the winter time yeah that it's like that's why you're gonna go out of business right you you have to make sound decisions and having grown up in northern michigan and i grew up poor it was my dad hunted and Mm -hmm. he hunted rabbits and he hunted deer and so i've i mean i've seen cows processed i've seen deer processed and i don't just go to the butcher counter and go okay i'll have that without no, like right. you know, people will, people will eat me and then like be horrified and, yeah. that people hunt. Right, right. And it's not for me. I'm not gonna hunt. Right. But I understand. Like you know, it's better to call herds than to mm-hmm. have you know thousands of deer that are starving right. to death. Yes. Um, and the same thing. It's it's better to feed a family. And like in Alaska, mm-hmm. they um, you know, if you hit a moose, basically what the, the state police do is they they have a list of needy families mm-hmm. and if you hit a moose and you kill it which will destroy your car because they're massive animals yeah. you know they're 900 to 1000 pound animals 
they will start calling down the list. Mm -hmm. And the first family that is on that list that answers the phone, they will be like, here's a, you know, here's a, uh, a moose on, uh, on the highway into Telkeetna. Do you want it? And they will feed families that would normally mm -hmm. not get fed. And so right. it's, you know, not everybody is going to be a vegetarian. Right. I, I like the taste of meat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I also don't, I, I mean, like I said, I'm not going to process it myself and I'm not going to go hunting myself, but I've, I've seen it and I, it, it's mainly a matter of like, I, I just don't want to. And I don't hunt. Do it. And I'm not going to process but, either. Right. But to take, take an animal to a processor mm -hmm. and feed people is something that should be. I mean, it, it should, it's something that's understandable, and it should be done. And it doesn't than have to be without tears. I mean, yeah. honestly, there has to be a connection to our food. That's why everything is so broken. Yeah. Now, our daughter has been a vegetarian for almost seven years, so she started when she was 11. And when we asked her why, totally respected it. We said, but you're a growing young woman. You have to know how to get the nutrients you need and everything. Um, and she, when I asked why, and she said, well because I never wanted to know where my food came from. And it's because I think I knew where the food was coming from. Right. And so um, she, you know, eats fish and everything, but I thought that's a great argument. I mean, because it's, it's like once you start watching all the movies and everything, it's like, it's horrific. So every time I've done this, I mean, I shed tears more than anybody, but you know, fine line between businesswoman well, and farmer and animal person. Yes. And you also make some a excellent products. Yes. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, peep, um, I sent, I send out your soaps at Christmas time and um, my mother loves them. So when she found out you were going to be on the show today, she called me. She's like, you need to buy me some more soaps and send them down to Atlanta. Okay, <laughs> so yeah. that'll happen. I mean, it is, you know, it's a super great product. It's and a great product. People have asked us, um, it's a conscious decision for a lot of people to pay $6 for a bar of soap, but that's why we've never raised the price since we've been in business, even though sometimes our cost has gone up, is that no matter what your economic status, I think you have a right to have something healthy and good for you and put it on your skin. Um, and it smells good. As opposed good. to it's not just for a certain you know type of person it can be right. for everybody and it is good and the best feedback we can get from this is with people who have skin issues or they're going through chemotherapy and it didn't hurt their skin to take a shower i mean that's the stuff that we're like okay well, well that's, and the that's other, her she has skin yeah. skin issues and where the other she has thing i will say about it is that on the opposite end of yeah i'll eat a goat i think they're cute but i'll also eat them, I eat them. um is if you buy kind of like the name brand Procter & Gamble, whatever, mm -hmm. most of those companies do animal testing. Mm -hmm. And as a beagle owner, most of the time testing is done on beagles because... And just as a, um, a side note on a legal stamp, we do not know if Procter & Gamble yeah. has any... Right. <laughs> Disclaimer, <laughs> I don't know that P&G does. <laughs> Actually, just actually, we do not know do, that, but, um, but we do not know there that. is a there's an app called Cruelty Cutter where you can find <laughs> out whether a particular brands that you use um, do animal testing. But... Beagles are often tested on because once you cut their voice box, um, oh which they do, uh, they are very sweet dogs that are docile, and you can you know poke them and prod them and stick things in their eyes and do things like that to them. And then you don't do that to your goats. I do not you don't do, do that to so, your goats. Oh so so knowing soap. that these soaps are not going to be tested on dogs that look a lot like they my were dogs, tested on my family, but <laughs> they're family family tested, <laughs> tested on humans. Um, is another reason yeah. to to say okay, well, that's worthwhile. You can wash your dog with our soap. Fantastic, which I will be doing with Dakota. Yeah, <laughs> Lively no, spilled apple never. juice on her on her the other day and didn't tell us. Oh, <laughs> so she's especially she's stinky. Crusty. Yeah, so she's kind of she's yeah. crusty. She's crusty. <laughs> crusty um, Dakota. So you also do the the laundry detergent, the laundry flakes, which mm -hmm. I enjoy an awful lot. Mm -hmm. Those are fantastic. So is that I just do. um dehydrated goats no milk, it's a or? bar of our soap ground up oh, and cool. then it's washing soda and um borax okay yeah that would make sense. and you sprinkle it over your clothes you fill it with water put your clothes in sprinkle it over and it gets them clean i mean there's not really any smell or anything which is awesome yeah but again it's a super gentle product so so we have a birthday party coming up <coughs> pardon me the baby shower the baby shower coming up and we do goat yoga. And we can find, 
how often do yeah, you how do often yoga? Do we do yoga? yoga? This needs to also month. be a field trip. Yeah, twice we do it month. twice a month on Saturdays, and we how do early it in, in the morning. Um, it's at like one. Oh. Okay, why have we not gone to goat yoga? I don't know. Why haven't we gone to goat yoga? I think we all need it. So we use all sizes of goats. It's not just baby goats. I have a goat, Ren. He's four years old. He probably weighs well over 200 pounds. He's this tall. That's a massive goat. And we have had people use him for support. He'll lay down next to you. He's he's pretty amazing. So we don't just use, like, baby goats. I also need to know, do you have a Stimpy? What's a Stimpy? Well, you have a Wren. Oh, ha, ha, ha. (laughs) <laughs> ah, 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 no, it's actually Ren from. Um, okay, they all had themes when we started naming them. So the it's high like, yeah, school, I did a dogs. The high school was doing Footloose. I was just gonna ask. So it's Ren. That's oh. beautiful. And then um, the quads and the twins were all named after um, historical figures figu- in the movie in the Broadway play Hamilton. So we have Alex, Aaron, George, Eliza, Angelica, and oh Hercules. No Peggy. <gasps> I have a Peggy, and then I have <laughs> Abigail as Abigail Adams. So then we okay. started switching into strong women who formed the country. And then the lambs, I was driving home from Eastern Market, and I was looking at them. They were peeking, you know, lambs in a Jeep, and they were looking at me, and I'm like, Steve, I just need a sheep named Steve. <laughs> and then it became Eddie and Emma just because, so. Okay. Would, would, the, would the baby lambs just, like, walk all over my back? Because that would be awesome. You know, they're a little massage, lamb massage. <laughs> oh my! Oh my God! Okay, we have to put that on. Oh, that's that needs to go on the page. Facebook page. Yeah. Which um, one is that? That's Steve. 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 <laughs> so he likes to go for walks. <laughs> do you put him on a leash? I, I do the put him on a leash. Oh my God! Yeah. I always felt conflicted about goat yoga, but if Amy approves, then yeah, I'm in. Right. I'm in. I'm like, you know what? Do they I like mean, it? Are they? So I don't know whether they like it or not. I just have to say it's more for people. It's like if they didn't like it, they wouldn't do it. They probably were out of your day. Yeah, Yeah. just just relax with some livestock. I mean, and just just be. I'm so allergic to hay. I think that's one of the reasons why I'm not. No, no, we have a little. Like last year, I created a yoga studio outside in the pasture. Really? It's got a picket fence, and then we're going to put down a nice layer of sand. Okay. Um, and that's what you'll put your yoga mats down, and then we'll spread hay around just to get the goats started to interact a little bit but you're not in the barn okay good because i couldn't do it when when lively was a baby they do the hay rides right yeah. and yeah. i thought i can do this i took all these allergy pills and got in the hay you're sitting thing, on a bale of hay sitting in there with him <laughs> and i don't know any of these moms because i wasn't like tied you know in the in the mom circuit where we were living at all so i said okay i'm gonna go i'm gonna be with these, these kids and i'm gonna meet other mothers and I was just tears streaming, Ooh. mascara running down my neck. And I was like, I can't do What's wrong with you, honey? Nothing. I just am allergic to all this shit. Get me out of here. Can somebody else hold my child? <laughs> this is awful. So do you have like a petting farm or I just, I've been driving out to Ann Arbor and they have at Domino Farms, they have a little petting farm area so where you could just go in and like, you know, feed them pellets or whatever for... So we consider ourselves like a working farm. Um, most of the times they're just hanging out. and But we have these double doors. So when you come to Pontiac, the double doors are there. And you'll be greeted by the goats. And then we have two livestock guardian dogs, Gus and Annie. And they'll come say hi, too. Now I have a vision of goats in, like, dorman gear. Yeah. <laughs> This is like some beautiful children's book come to life, yeah. basically. Mm-hmm. Like if I had any artistic <laughs> of, of ability at all, we would have goats in a freaking like old timey wooden wheelbarrow and goats with three piece suits on and little hats, like the farm of the Biddy. <laughs> <laughs> Biddy Acres. That's Biddy my Acres. daughter. <laughs> She's eighteen and in college, but. <laughs> She says she deserves royalties because it all started because of her and her lactose intolerance. She does deserve royalties. Absolutely. That's called college. Well, she's going to college. My kids kids claim royalties on the book because they're in a bunch of the pictures and Mm -hmm. they went with me on everything. They're like, we get 10%. And I'm like, of my 10%? Sure. That's fine. (laughs) Here's your 50 cents now, kid. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. The the way things actually work versus the way you think that they work. Mm -hmm. Business 101. So you're in Pontiac. Yes. 
Where are you in? Po- You're a farm. Where are you? At in Goldner Pontiac? Walsh. It's the um, it's a landscape company on Orchard Lake Road, and it sits on nine acres. And then oh, we wow. add an additional three and a half acres three years ago that we bought from Oakland County for two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, that's um, nice. It's and Oakland it's County. the longest running company in the city of Pontiac. Goldner Walsh is, okay. and so because it's in, um, there's not a lot of people living around there. I don't keep any intact males, which means there's no smell right. of a typical farm. Um, and um, part of it, because it's from 1890, is still zoned agricultural. Oh, wow. And we invested in a city that's not getting a lot of attention. Yes, absolutely. And we welcome children and we welcome the people with Alzheimer's who remember having goats growing up and they don't remember anything else. And we did a bucket list for a couple from Birmingham that were in their 90s and he he, he was not there anymore and she always wanted a goat, never had one. So her caregiver came and we brought out two baby goats and they got to hang with them for 10 minutes. So you know what? It's kind of like how Detroit used to be, ask forgiveness, not permission. Well, in Pontiac, it's like if you welcome in the community and if you're part of the community and you're working towards, you know, helping Pontiac come back, you can't, it's not you can do whatever you want, but it's like everything we're doing is it's positive welcoming. and it's about kids. Yeah. yeah. Now, you you weren't always out there, though. No, we tried to move to Detroit. Yeah, and then they, they had the different ordinances that changed. Yeah, and every everything. time we said, you know, we want to come, we want to we make our product, we want to hire high schoolers and teach them about small business and how it works. And if you think outside the box but have a strong business plan, you know, what can you do? And we met as high as the White House. And every time we said, but we want to bring goats, we never heard from anybody again. What? Right. Yeah. If I were in charge you would have had stuff going on. Goats would have been everywhere. <laughs> goats would have been, goats can rule the world. Or at least they can The fairgrounds them. property right there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. Well, we had been looking at Brightmore. I mean, oh, you know Brightmore. Great. I mean, and we had looked at a house, and we're like, that house would be perfect. And the time we were going through all these meetings, the house burned down. And then it was like, and at some point you have to, you know, you wake up every day and it's like slamming your head into a brick wall continuously. And at that time we had an advisor from MSU, and I remember calling him and going, I don't want to do it. Like, I felt myself shutting down inside. I was like, I don't want to do this. And Pontiac, this business owner, Tim Travis, kept saying, come to Pontiac. Just come to Pontiac. And Pontiac needs you it is the, the way Detroit thing needs we people. ever did. We just moved to Pontiac January 2nd. That's fantastic. We sold our house it's in Berkeley. It's a beautiful historical city. Oh, it's wonderful. It we is a beautiful big house. area. Yeah. I'm so excited to go to goat yoga right now. I know. We're <laughs> going to go to goat yoga. I do have some sad Pontiac news that made me very sad. And then I want to go back and I have questions, uh, a couple more questions for you. But Well, we've got the, about one minute. The bat zone closed. Yes. Oh. Yeah. That yes. was a tragedy. And I yeah. love bats. I now have a bat house that needs to be put up in my yard. But they moved all of the bats to the Detroit Zoo, Detroit who's Zoo's providing yeah. sanctuary. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and other residents yeah. of the bat zone. But it yeah, makes me very, very sad. sad because I had never made it out there when I was at Cranbrook, and then I didn't make it out there when I was at Pontiac. So now i got to go to the zoo and see the damn bats. Well, there's something yeah, not right about it. Yeah. No, there was it's very yeah. odd. And the I gentleman agree. who ran it, um, the, the really nice man who was right. the bat expert, um, he's a good person. Yes. So there's something weird yes. there. Yeah. I keep trying to key on. in the local newspapers, like, get on this. Figure yeah. out what happened for all of us. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, it seemed like it was doing yeah. good was. things, and then I mean, something and was, happened there that was, yeah, yeah he I was don't know fired, exactly what. And then, yeah. yeah there was Follow the money. So, but to go back to good, good Pontiac news and goat stuff. So, if we wanted to go to goat yoga or the... Ba- baby, the shower. baby shower do we need to s- register in advance or can we Goat just yoga show up you can sign up for on our um website which is www.citygirls.farm citygirls.farm okay. um and then the baby shower is just come and bring a gift you don't have to respond or anything we get big cakes from costco we'll be walking around with steve <laughs> and then with steve and that's other. what he does <laughs> so um with and i'm sorry you said with the the stuff that you get for human babies, like if I go bring oh, diapers, it goes to where? Donated to Lighthouse of Oakland County. Excellent. To their PATH program. Excellent. Very cool. Um, I do want to make sure that I throw in something for Busted right now, too, talking about donations. Uh, we are always taking gently used uh, bras, gently used clean 
bras for support the girls and right now there's a big push for that so if you have gently used clean bras that you would like to donate um, for people who need bras who um, are economically challenged support the girls which is the national organization uh, does come and pick them up from us regularly and then we sort them and get them distributed to people in the local area and support the girls accepts feminine hygiene products yes. and bras correct yes we yes. take all of that and make sure it gets distributed properly yeah. beautiful so in uh, busted also has the brides of march going on which would brides be about the time we should mention that again given the the date date um. <laughs> yeah tomorrow would be the yeah, the Ides of March. So, yes, the Brides of March is going all through March, 20% off of bridal gear. Uh, so if you need anything, you know, even if you're just coming in for a white bra, you do not have to be a bride, but all the bridal wear is 20% off. Yeah, Brides of March. People, you know, I, I like the way that I come up with taglines. That's beautiful. Thank right? you very much. <laughs> the Brides of March. Uh, and women who rock this weekend. Black women. Black women who rock. Black women rock. Black women rock. Black women rock. Jessica Caremore. So um, we're one of the sponsors, and my accountant called me the other day and said, Lee, there's something weird uh, on your checking account. Why did you send money to something that says Detroit butt? (laughs) 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 And it took me a minute. I was like, Detroit butt. The lady, (coughs) excuse me, who runs uh, Black Women Rock, she uses Detroit butterfly. Oh, (laughs) Oh. (laughs) (laughs) But it comes across on the credit card as Detroit butt. Yeah, it was kind of like. Nope. I know there's a mushroom farm. I know there's some duck uh, in a duck B and B, but a butt. That there's would a be duck. Different. There's a duck B and B. We yeah. need. Okay, we need well, to go further. Duck B and B. Suzanne Scoville. Yeah. You can go to a B and B and hang out with yeah, ducks. She's well, on the it's east like side. It's like an Airbnb style. It is. I think. It's called but the Duck and Roll Inn. Duck and Roll Inn. And she has a. Um, oh my God, that's She has great. an Easter party for the children in the neighborhood. Oh, duck and roll. Okay, I'd rather have like an Easter egg hunt. I'd rather have a goat in, but the duck is fun. Well, we'll work on the goat in. We'll get that going. Amy, let's get a go going. We see we can three, <laughs> we could 3D print you a building and right. put it out be, in the pasture and you could have an Airbnb for goats. Can Lively make me a um, robot? A robot. Yeah. Yes. yes. A robot. It all goat. comes together. Oh, I love it. So, all right, anyway. so all kinds of <laughs> all kinds of amazing things. Um, so we have a listener um, from in- who lives in England regularly. Uh, she goes by the name June. June, yeah, June. June. Was, so uh, hello, June. Hi, June. We we featured a sports bra a couple weeks back for June. We did. Nick, would you hit red over there? And uh, um, yeah. so June w- happened to be with my mom yesterday. So I just want to say, hey, I hope you enjoyed it, um, and that you got to watch again and listen. And thank you for always listening. Uh, bras, bitches, and balls uh, next week. Are we going to be on? I'm You're not going to be, be out here. of town. Nick, are we going to be on? Um, I'm going to be in Mexico. Be. I can find a guest. Oh. <laughs> we can be. I can find a guest. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll figure it we'll out. We'll let you guys we'll know if we'll next find, week we'll, is going to we'll be a thing. Uh, the week after, in two weeks, we'll definitely be here. Uh, I'll be building a place in Chicago, but come back just for bras, bitches, and balls. I'm kidding. But I am coming back. Um, and then go back down to Chicago to continue building said store. Uh, don't worry, br- uh, busted bra shop is going to be taking over the world. <laughs> right, Lise? Yes. Taking over the world. Taking over the world. One state at a time. One state at a time. <laughs> and then okay. we'll bring goats. All right. Um, <laughs> if you have something that you'd like us to, to put on the podcast, please let us know. If you have a guest that you'd like to have on the podcast, please let us know. I've had people coming up to me making suggestions and and making connections so that's fun i want to thank karen and amy thank for you. both thank coming you. on i can't wait to read the new book and to get it and i think it's a great glove box gift yeah put it in your glove box how mm-hmm. big is it about the same size it's as your be, better yeah, made it's gonna be a little uh soft covered or you know easy to throw in the car and drag along and force your friends to go see detroit with you Beautiful. i think it's amazing amazing and go see the goats oh i'm Let's going to the goats. goats jessica thank you for being here today my pleasure. Awesome. Never boring. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Lisa, we're out of here. Bye. 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 Stay bitchy. Stay bitchy.